From heavy metals like brass and copper, to various woods, to stunning patinas, the keyboard hobby has always loved experimenting with exotic materials. Today, the Terra 75 offers something quite different, concrete. So let's take a look at this unique pre-built and what exactly it offers as a new contender in the 75% keyboard space. First, the unboxing. We've got this nice themed box. Under this foam is our switch and keycap puller, a braided cable, and an instruction manual for RGB and Bluetooth key bindings. And here is the board itself inside this bag. However, ASIO also sent out some extra components for us to take a look at, including this maple knob, aluminum bottom case, of course the concrete top case, and a PVD multicolor top case. Terra 75 is a tray mounted 75% keyboard. We have a north facing RGB hot swap PCB with no daughter board. This is Bluetooth capable and includes a 4000 milliamp hour battery. We only have an included steel plate. For colors, the top case, bottom case, and knob are all configurable with three pre made combos, five possible top case add ons, two possible aluminum bottom case add ons, and five knobs, including two wood and three aluminum. Since this is a pre built, keycaps will match the chosen case colorway, and the build will come with your choice of Gateron G Pro Blues browns, yellows, or reds. Lastly, the Terra 75 will retail for $200 and will go as low as $140 for early Kickstarter pledgers. Let's take a listen to the board stock. So the pre-built sound is fine. The volume isn't too loud, but the overall profile is just lame, which is a signature of the OEM keycap profile. It's on the higher pitched end, which is thanks to the steel plate. The stock screw and stabilizers are pretty bad, and they all have one end, which is rattly. It looks like they all have a ton of lube with the wire clips in, but almost none inside the stab stem. The board already has plate foam, case silicone, and PE foam installed, so it's impossible to comment on the foamless sound now, which is going to be important if you want to diversify the sound signature more. However, thanks to all this, we have no hollowness. The material of the top and bottom case are going to influence the sound as well, so I expect our build to sound different due to more factors than just the switch, keycaps, and foam configuration. Because of the steel plate and screw positions, the board is extremely stiff. Offering more plate choices should definitely be looked into, as I feel it's significantly hindering the possibilities in terms of sound and feel customization. The included Gateron G Pro switches are actually decently smooth, from what I can tell from a tactile. It's important to note that these are the same switches Keychron includes in some of their Q-series boards. Overall, both the stock sound and feel are acceptable for a pre-built, but not quite as good as it could be for the price point and what we've seen from competitors. So in order to rebuild this board, let's start by removing the keycaps and switches. Now we'll be able to unscrew the inner assembly and top case, remove the knob, and remove the entire top assembly. This is attached to the bottom via two cables, one for the battery switch and one for the battery. The cable for the switch has this weird adhesive on it. Not really sure why this is necessary. Now for the inner assembly. I'll first detach the top case and the inner assembly. These are held together by magnets, which is pretty cool. Now I can detach the plate and PCB, which are connected with standoffs, and remove the foams. I'm going to install factory lubed oak switches and top up the stabilizers with some dielectric grease. With the inner assembly done, let's prep the new bottom case. I'll only transfer the switch. I tried to transfer the battery as well, but the adhesive was way too strong to safely remove it. The case silicone was too thick to fit, so I'll just put the plate foam here. We can screw the inner assembly in, attach the concrete top case, install the knob, and mount DCX Hyperfuse. Let's take a listen.
So the sound is much more like a custom keyboard instead of a pre-built. The volume is similar, which is good. Granted, we did remove the PE foam sheet. It also ended up sounding pretty deep for a steel plate. I'm happy the sound isn't dead with the lack of foam, and also isn't hollow, although it still is a tad dull. At least the jerry-rigged case foam is doing its job. Just injecting some dielectric grease into the stabilizers pretty much fixed them, which is great. But this is really something that the factory should take care of, especially if they're already coming lubed. One of the reasons I chose Oaks for this build is that they're a more subdued tactile, due to their more heavy factory lube job. This helps complement the stiffness and sharpness of the steel plate. And I definitely think if you want to go for a custom build, you should go heavier on the lube job to help even out the feel. In this case, it works really well, and the config ends up feeling nicely tactile and not super fatiguing. The knob is alright. It has a smooth and satisfying rotation, but the click is not incredible, especially on the edges. The aluminum one especially feels kind of rattly, and the size is a bit awkward, as there's no real reason for it to be as large as it is. Compared to implementations like the QK75, while it isn't going to feel as premium, it'll get the job done. The Bluetooth functionality is great. You can connect up to three different devices, and have the option to switch between a Mac and PC mode for the different bottom row layouts. The latency and stability are great, and I can comfortably write scripts with no issues. As for the RGB, there are plenty of options, but I prefer to keep it on the mode that lights up single keys to save battery. There are a few different configurable effects, and you can adjust brightness and color with hotkeys easily. I assume the PCB is north facing to accommodate the RGB, but this causes problems as we now can't use normal length pole switches with cherry profile keycaps. The first thing we notice design wise is the huge top bezel and logo in the top left. The top case is thinner than the bottom case on the side, and the side profile overall is very flat. Our USB is placed on the right side, and on the bottom, we have some chunky integrated feet. Lastly, there's a switch at the top right to turn the battery and Bluetooth on or off. Base kits include plastic bottoms, which is kinda lame, especially since the Keychron Custom Keyboard series includes fully aluminum cases. The main competitor to the Terra 75 from this standpoint would be the Q1 Pro, which also has a 75% layout, a knob, and is wireless. The Q1 Pro has a much more dynamic design, which is very similar to that of the Alpine 65, and overall has a much more refined base kit compared to the Terra at the same $200 price point. In terms of material quality, the metal pieces aren't the best. My mirror silver PVD top case, for example, is a little bit rough. There are obvious machining lines that run left and right, various nicks, and lots of imperfections around the top left logo. It doesn't compare to other mirror parts, like the Mode Envoy's mirror weight, which, granted is much simpler, is also flawless. Generally, stainless steel is used for PVD mirror weight finishes, so I assume aluminum is used here for cost reasons. The chrome PVD top case is actually quite a bit cleaner. While it does have the same left to right machining lines, there are no more imperfections around the logo, which is great to see. The concrete finish is actually really smooth to the touch, and I'm sure a lot of you expected it to be rough. It seems to be coated in something that gives it a more rubbery texture and a very matte sheen. Overall, I think the board lacks the attention to detail that's so crucial nowadays in the budget market. We've seen so many excellent offerings come out in the past year, from QWERTY keys pioneering the budget space, Keychron being a larger company creating consumer-friendly offerings, and even smaller studios creating projects that are easier on everyone's wallets. It's starting to become a very hard market to tap into, and what separates a good budget board from a great one is the attention to what consumers value most, and in this case, that would be a modernized mounting system, material quality, available choices, and ready-to-go parts right out of the box. With these changes, I think the Terra 75 can be an excellent and cost-friendly option.